the topic that we'll be talking about today is again wave properties and we've discussed the main properties and the main um, constitu constituents and the wave equation uh, that are related to waves and the theory of waves. So moving forward, we have talked about uh, refraction, but refraction is basically the phenomena which happens uh, that a wave changes its direction when it has when it is at a different uh, material boundary. So different materials have different densities. Light waves may change direction at the boundary between two transparent materials. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave at such boundary. It is important to be. It is also important to note that not only there is a change in direction, but there is also a change in the wavelength, hence the change of speed in uh, the wave, since the frequency remains the same. So it is important to be able to draw ray diagrams to show the refraction of a wave boundary. We've discussed the phenomena of refraction, but now in this one, we are going to talk about the wave diagrams and the ray diagrams and how to basically depict uh, refraction from different boundaries. Uh, so in this case, we can see that the ray. Another thing to notice that we are talking about rays and not waves is because it is easier to draw diagrams and represent these phenomena using a single ray than drawing multiple wave fronts because then it can, can get really tricky. So it is also important to note that uh, rays are just imaginary lines that go perpendicular from the wave fronts. So mm -hmm. if wave fronts were in this direction, the green line basically represents rays that are perpendicular to it. So for our own convenience, we draw rays instead of wave fronts. So initially we draw a wave ray that is incident to this wave boundary uh, or this uh, material boundary. So the ray hits the material boundary at one specific point. The first thing you do is that you draw a normal over there. A normal is the perpendicular imaginary, again imaginary line that goes from, um, that is perpendicular to the point where the ray hits the boundary surface. And after that, what you do is that you marry the angle of incidence. And the angle of incidence is the angle that is from the normal to the, that is from the normal, to the incident ray. So over here, 55 is the incident, 55 is the angle of incidence. Now in reflection, what happens is that the angle of reflection is same as the angle of incidence. However, in refraction, since the direction changes and it does not go all straight like that, so the angle is not 55 or it's not the same as angle of incidence. However, it changes because refraction is all about changing direction. So in this case, the angle has been decreased to 33 as it enters the wave boundary. Now, the question that arises is that will there be a, an option or a, a, or a possibility that this angle increases? And how do we know if it's this if angle of refraction is going to be greater than the angle of incidence or if it is going to be lesser than angle of incidence and if yes that it can get greater than angle of incidence that it can that the ray refracted refractive ray it can go like this so that means that the angle would have been obviously greater than 55 it would be something like 80. so is there a possibility that that can happen we are going to talk about that and i'm going to explain how to draw ray diagrams Okay, so there are two cases in this scenario. This is the first case box, and this is the second case box. This is first, and this is second. Now I'm gonna draw the boundary between the two materials. Okay, and the yellow one is the denser material it is denser so i'm going to write a d over here and another d over here okay no sorry um i need to change this 
the two cases are different because in this case then it will be the same um, so yeah in the first case what is happening is that um, this is the rarer medium and then this is denser medium however in this case it's going to be the opposite that this is the rarer medium and then this is denser medium so we are also going to I'm going to add the yellow over here yeah so this is basically the denser medium and this is rarer medium so in the first case what happens is that I'm going to draw an incident ray that moves from here to here and it touches the boundary at this point and at this point we draw a normal exactly that is perpendicular to the surface it's not perfect the way I, I drew it and similarly in this medium to there's an incident ray that is incident on the uh, boundary surface now what happens next that is very important to note when a ray is moving or when wave when a wave is moving from a region of rarer medium to a region of higher um, or from a rare medium to a denser medium from rarer or shallow medium shallow to denser it moves towards the normal towards yeah so i'm just gonna do it up here so instead of going straight obviously there is going to be a change in direction and that changes direction is going to be towards the normal so the angle of incidence in this case is going to be greater than the angle of refraction that has been caused now and uh, similarly in the other case where we are talking about um, the movement from a denser to rarer medium in this case the opposite exactly happens that it moves away from the normal so if you think about it when it goes from r to d which is rarer to denser it moves towards the normal which means that the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction however in the other case in the opposite case when it moves from denser to rarer the vice versa happens that it moves away from the normal and the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence so this is like a convention so sorry this is something to it's not a convention it is a fact and it is something that you need to memorize that it goes towards normal from rarer to denser medium and away from the normal explaining refraction now the density of a material affects the speed that a wave will be transmitted through it in general the denser pair, uh, or the transparent material the more slowly light travels through it glass is denser than air so a light ray passing through air passing from air into glass slows down so if the ray meets the boundary at an angle normal it bends towards the normal the reverse is also true a light ray speeds up as it passes from glass to air and bends away from the uh, away from the normal by the same angle the wave slows down its wave then decreases as it enters the glass if the light ray hits the block at an angle its speed and direction both of them change as we've seen we've talked about the direction of change but now we're talking about speed change too the ray is bent back into the original direction as it leaves the block as the ray goes into the glass from there it's bent towards the normal the angle of the refraction is less than the angle of incidence well we've talked about that so now i'm going to talk about the speed change and why exactly it happens
So it's it's basically just the same thing if you draw a straight boundary and some angular wave or if you draw a straight wave and then boundary at some angle because you're essentially doing the same thing. So uh, provided the angles of incidence, they are same. So if this is theta and this is also theta, then both of them are basically showing the same thing. So whatever is convenient, you should go for that option when drawing ray diagrams. So what happens is that I'm going to draw a boundary, a ray is incident, and that ray is basically just an imaginary line that we're drawing. We actually have some wave fronts. And the distance between two wave fronts is basically, and this I'm just drawing this wave front to some length. They're actually just, um, their length is not given and just, let's just say it just um, extends to some greater length that, okay. So these are wavelengths. And the distance between these two lines, these parallel lines is lambda. So let's just say if we're talking about this and this distance, is basically equal to lambda. Now, what is the angle of incidence? Well, for in order to find the angle of incidence, we need to first draw down the normal. So this is the normal. And the angle of incidence is from the ray to the normal. This is the angle of incidence. Now, before drawing the wavefronts of the refractive uh, waves, it's important to draw the ray first. So it's moving from a region of uh, from a rare medium to a denser medium. So obviously it's going to go towards the normal. So it goes like this. And since it's going to a denser medium, it's going to slow down. Slow down, which means uh, velocity decreases. And we know from wave equation that V is equal to F lambda. Since frequency remains same, velocity decreases. In order for the frequency to be same, the wavelength should increase. So the refractive waves, they are basically more, distant so that basically is what happens now we've talked about a uh, refraction another phenomena that occurs very uh, importantly is diffraction now diffraction is basically shown in these diagrams and in figure a which is this one and this is b uh, straight water waves in a ripple tank are meeting gaps from uh, by obstacles. So the, this is basically an aperture or an obstacle that is being set over here. Uh, this gap over here is the aperture. The figure A, the gap width is about the same as the wavelength. So the wavelength is this and the gap width is also this. So it's about the same length, one centimeter. The wavefronts that pass through become circular as they spread out in the direction. So you can see that as they pass through this aperture, they get in circular direction. However, if the aperture is of significantly higher uh, distance or is larger than the wavefront wavelength of the waves, then they curve out at the edges, but they do remain parallel from the other directions, as you can see over here. So in figure B, the gap is y, that is 10 centimeter, 10 times that of wave length compared with the wavelength and the waves become they continue straight with some spreading occurs but that is less obvious this is a diagram which basically shows a similar diffraction that is happening in similar uh, diagram b that the wave length that is over here it is significantly smaller than the aperture width so they are kind of parallel lines over here in the center, but then they do tend to get uh, a little curvy and edgy from the other sides. Now, we've talked about the main concept of diffraction and uh, refraction, but there are some things that will get in need in the next chapters. Uh, so if the position of a wave is these are some things that you should just go through so that it is easier to understand the next concepts. Although they are not in the syllabus as such.